Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Steven Universe Retrospectives. And today, we're going to be discussing episodes 13 and 14 of Steven Universe Future, Together Forever, and Growing Pains. And, uh, yeah, as I promised last week, these episodes are where things start going wrong again. So, uh... Together Forever begins with Steven and Connie just, you know, chatting it up. Basically, they're on video they're on video call, and Connie is taking a 15-minute break from her studies. And, of course, she and Steven... And in that 15-minute break, she and Steven have just been, you know, shooting the shit, having fun, talking about their futures, or more specifically, Connie's future, as she's figuring out where she wants to go to college, what she'll major in, what she'll minor in, and so on and so forth, which Steven does comment her. She does seem to have everything put together, though when she... Though, when the topic of college is brought up, Stephen brings up that the last time she visited, she left a pamphlet for her college of choice at his house, but Connie just tells him to keep it. She's got two more at home, and the internet's a thing. So, she thinks it's all good. As such, they end up ending the call because Connie's got... because Connie's 15-minute break is up, and so, and as such, she and Stephen part, and things seem happy, though once Stephen's off the phone, he does seem a little distraught, and, well, things start getting worse as he looks at the pamphlet that he has, as he looks at the pamphlet, and it turns out that the, co that the college that Connie wants to go to is on the other side of the country, which, yeah, when Steven realizes how far away it is, he starts glowing pink again, and he seems to get a little bit heavier as he sinks into his bed a little farther. As such, Steven and as such, Steven calms down enough so that he is able to go downstairs without being pink, and he decides he and he realizes he needs to talk to someone. As such, he sees Garnet as she hasn't left as she hasn't left to go do her gem duty as her, or her school duties yet, but she seems to be getting dressed as she's got like a little neckerchief on, a little hat, and Steven says she wants to talk to her, but she says that she'll have to talk later. She's got a split. Quite literally in this case, as she unfuses into Ruby and Sapphire. And the reason why? Because Ruby and Sapphire have things to do! Yeah, it turns out that Ruby and Sapphire have their own individual jobs at the school. In this case, they both just kind of have their own things. Like, Ruby is a scoutmaster leading a troop of gems and Onion in nature and just, you know, doing regular scout stuff, while Sapphire has a class on alternate timelines, which she has to run off to and even she admits she's running late for. As such, after she kisses Ruby goodbye, and she kisses Ruby goodbye, she runs off with Ruby saying she's got to go with her scoutmaster, though she tells Steven that she can tag along, he can tag along, at least Ruby will listen, and so as such, Steven begins, as Steven accompanies her on her, on, on her, yeah, he accompanies her and her troop as they go out into nature, as their, because the task they're going to be doing today is sketching nature. As such, as, as such, while as Ruby leaves her students to their own devices, she asks Steven what's up, and Steven talks about how unsure he is about everything. About how Connie seems to have everything put together, how she knows what her future is, but Steven still has absolutely no idea what he wants to be. That she may be moving across the country, and he'll be still be stuck here in Beach City. That as Stevani, he feels like he can take on the world, but when he's not Stevani, he's, he feels like he's just... He feels like he's incomplete, that things are kind of going wrong, but where, and well, yet Connie always seems to know the answers to everything. It seems to always know what to do. And at this point, well, at this point, Ruby's hearing all this, and she's like, well, that's a lot to take in, my man. Well, she doesn't use those words, but you get what I mean. But ultimately, as Steven continues thinking it over, he has a, well, revelation, so to speak, as he realizes that his future is Connie! That she is his future! She is what he wants to spend the rest of his life with! That she is what he wants to do with the rest of his life! And, well, rather than, you know, kind of talking Steven down and bringing him back to Earth, Ruby starts freaking out in the best way possible, as she just get that she has a big smile and she starts stamping her feet so fast that she actually causes a small fire that she has to put out with a nearby blanket. As such, she tells Steven maybe he should propose to Connie, which Steven's a little a little put off by, but Ruby keeps pushing him a little, saying, come on, don't tell me you haven't thought about it. And Steven has kind of, and Steven does blush because he has thought about it, but he's still a little unsure. As such, while Ruby is still pushing him and keeps telling him to do it, do it, do it, do it, she eventually manages, she even says, well, if you don't think I'm right, maybe you should talk to someone who can see the future. As such, she sends she sends Steven off to go talk to Sapphire as she's performing her class, which, when I first saw the scene, believe it or not, I was kind of hoping Onion would be in her class too, but, you know, I guess we don't get to see Onion in everything anymore. But ultimately, yeah. But ultimately, yeah, Steven manages to come up with Sapphire, and with, and per Sapphire's future vision, she expected Steven to come, and so he asked her the same question, basically basically bringing up what Ruby brought up the whole marriage thing, and that she suggested that Steven talk to Sapphire. And so Sapphire decides to kind of 
lay it all out on the table as a mathematical equation, talking about all these various factors that would go into a relationship, what would result in them wanting to get married, all these little things that come together, though as she writes it all out in the sand, a wave of wa a wave, some water from the ocean comes up and washes it away, which freaks Steven out, but Sapphire just chuckles, and she chuckles because that was her point. Basically, the whole point, the thing is with love, it's unquantifiable. Basically, her the whole future, that's the whole present that Sapphire is living now, she had never once predicted it. This is not something that she ever expected to do. She never expected that she and Ruby would be married. But now here she is. They're happily married. They're doing their own things. Off being, off being happy people, but also still being together. At the end of the day, all of this is something that she never expected, but it's something beautiful and amazing. And the thing is, it all just came out of nowhere. And love can just is like a way that can wash away any probabilities and so as a result she's with ruby she thinks that steven should propose because anything could happen and so like ruby she just tells steven to do it do it do it as such steven takes the advice of these two dorks and he decides that he's gonna propose to connie and he goes the full nine yards he gets a cute little cake he gets flowers he gets a basket he dresses up nice he gets a blanket he gets roses and you know where and he even sets up a little picnic where he and connie first met it's kind of adorable even if if you ignore the whole this is gonna blow up terribly thing but yeah steven does manage to make does go to connie's house just as her 15 minute break rolls around and he says that maybe they could go for a little walk with connie a little unsure because she needs to make it back in time but steven says it's fine especially since they have lion right there with them which yeah he had lion with them and well lion can teleport so no matter where they go they can get her right back to her house when her 15 minutes are up as such with as such, Steven and Connie take Lion to the beach, and Steven shows her the place where they met, and, yeah, Connie's just immediately awestruck by all of this, all the effort put into it. And I'll give credit where it's due, the picnic really does feel like it feels like there's a lot of heart put into it like they got the like there's like jam like there's jam and toast like the whole jam buds thing steven's got a little guitar there's rose petal there's yellow roses all around the place it's honestly sweet and i'll give and even steven pulls up the guitar and even starts singing a song which i think is called i'd rather be me with you and the first half of it sounds really nice as he talks about i'd rather be tall i'd rather be smart i'd rather be i'd rather have you in my heart as if i could rather be me with you until we get to the second verse, which sounds sweet, until you get to deeper meanings. As Steven talks about how he wants to know everything about her, how he wants to know her entire syllabus and all that stuff, which, yeah, considering why Steven's doing all this, that takes a darker meaning. But either way, Connie loves the song and thinks it's beautiful, it's nice. Until Steven takes an E and pulls out his wedding ring, which in this case is the glow is the glow wristband that Steven originally wanted to return to Connie when they first met. Again, there was a lot of thought put into this, and I'll give him cr credit for creativity. And, yeah, Steven pops the question, which freaks Connie out something fierce. But Steven just thinks, no, it's perfect. This makes so much sense. Oh, we can be together as Stevani. I could go with you to college. I know everything that you're doing. And you basically, he wants to basically, basically, his, his this is the whole reason he's kind of doing this is to try and hold on to Connie. And, uh... Connie does kind of tell Steven that maybe they should back up a little bit. It's not, which Steven's a little confused by because he thinks this makes so much sense. Like, the, he knows that they want to be together, and Connie does assure Steven that, yes, she does want to spend the rest of her life with him, but not right now. So there's a lot of things that Connie wants to do with her life that she kind of needs to, that she kind of needs to do on her own. And yes, she would, she does love being Stevani with Steven, but she's got to live her own life, which if Steven hears this, you can see it's kind of starting to destroy him. And the thing about Con with Connie, she's trying to word this as delicately as possible to Steven. Like when she sees that Steven's upset, she walks towards him and she takes, and she takes, and she takes measures to not ruin the picnic. Like she steps around the flowers, the toast, the picnic basket, everything, and just kind of, and even gets him into a hug and says that she's not saying no, she's just saying not yet. But Steven is not hearing that tone. She's not hearing all that. She's not hearing all that. He's just like, I, I thought we wanted the same thing. And you can tell that there's a little part of his heart that's breaking. And as Connie is trying to talk to him, she's just saying, it's okay. Look, she's trying to like reach him, but in the middle of their talk, her alarm goes off as her 15 minutes are up. Which at first she tries to ignore because this is clearly important. But Steven just suddenly says, no, it's fine. It's fine. You can go. It's fine. And Stephen and Connie's like, are you sure? I can stay. It's fine. It's like, no, no, no. Your studying's important. Go on. It's okay. 
and Connie, a little hesitant, decides to comp decides to comply as she goes back to Lion, and Lion teleports her away. And well, the instant Steven is alone on the beach, he throws out his arms, falls back into the blanket, and turns pink as he cries. And uh, this is a very big pink outburst as it causes a as he actually creates a crater right there. On this in this beach and well he stays in that crater for at least a couple more at least for a couple more hours enough time for the sun to go down which it was already going down before but now it's just completely down and as F steven finally crawls out of the crater there's garnet waiting for him with the picnic basket because yeah she foresee it saw this happening as such, she, and Steve, she accompanies Stephen back to the house, and Stephen wonders why this thing could have gone so wrong. After all, Ruby and Sapphire encouraged him to do this, but Garnet tells him that maybe he shouldn't have taken the advice of those love-struck fools, which some people have kind of called this out because Ruby and Sapphire are meant to be Garnet, because so it doesn't make so it kind of feels weird that Ruby and Sapphire would get back would give the advice they did, and Garnet wouldn't reciprocate it. But you gotta remember something: Ruby and Sapphire are both Garnet. And also not Garnet. The thing is, Garnet as a person is like a conglomerate of everything that Ruby and Sapphire are. And while individually Ruby and Sapphire are di are different people, together what the, their very beings mi mix and mingle to create Garnet, creating an entirely new person. And the thing is, while separately they may have these 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 opinions, together with the emotional clarity and and, and well clairvoyance of the other person of the of their other party. They're allowed to kind of look things at a different angle and realize, okay, maybe that wasn't the best advice. So I am going to still kind of say that, yeah, it makes sense why Garnet would disagree with this. And she drops another bit of advice, which I'm going to have to pause the recording for because it's on my phone and I'm using my phone as a light. So g excuse me one second. Okay, but yeah, Steve, as, Steven is, 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 as Garnet is accompanying Steven back to the house, she drops one very big line, one that actually shakes Steven. She says, whatever hole in your life... Connie, Stevani, won't be able to fill it. And that actually ma makes Stephen... That actually... Stephen looks horrified when he hears that. And which point... Uh, at which point, as Garnet... As Garnet invites him to sit down on the stairs leading to the house, Stephen does kind of get a little upset as he starts kind of sort of blaming Garnet and she makes it look so easy. And he, and he decides to console himself by eating what's left of the cake because, yeah, it did get a little wrecked when Stephen had his freak out, which Garnet tells him it won't fix anything, but he, he decides to do it anyway, which is both hilarious and sad all at the same time. So, yeah. But that also leads us into growing pains. And, yeah, it turns out that Steve, that the, the botched proposal kind of is hitting Steven very hard, as apparently he sequestered himself off in his room and has just been spending all of his time eating ice cream and watching t and watching movies and eating cereal. And apparently, and it's not helped by the fact that he's wa apparently watching the next Dog Copter movie, or at least the trailer for it, wherein Dog Copter opposes to his partner, who is a apparently another dog who can talk without moving his lips. Although he is adorable, he needs hugs. I like dogs, sue me. But ultimately, Steven's just feeling worse and worse for wear, and he can't talk to the gems about this because at the, this point in time, they're off on a field trip, and he can't get any reception. And unfortunately, he doesn't really want to talk to Connie right now. As such, he decides for the next best thing. He'll call his dad. And his dad is able to pick up the phone, but he's not in Beach City right now. Because, like, because as I said with Haley when we talked about the little graduation episode, Greg's on tour with Sadie and Shep. And basically, they've just been going all around the country. And they're supposed to come back to Beach City that night. Which Steven says he's looking forward to because he really wants to talk to his dad about something about this whole thing. Until his dad kind of drops a bombshell on Steven. Apparently, the tour's been extended! So, St Greg isn't going to be coming home, which immediately kind of makes Steve shake Steven even more. And Steven's like, oh. And St Greg picks up enough to make Steven to realize that Steven might want to talk to him. As he says, well, we can still stop by when we go through Delmarva. But Steven's like, no, it's fine. It's fine. This, it's not important. It's fine. You just can keep doing your tour. And, St and as such... As such, the call gets kind of cut short as Greg and as Greg and Co end up going through a tunnel, and they lose the signal. But he promises, to, but he wants Stephen to call him back. Stephen does not call him back. If anything, Stephen just goes downstairs and tries to once again wallow in his own tries to wallow in his own negativity with more ice cream. Although when he gets to the freezer, he looks inside and sees Connie's bracelet, which causes an emotional reaction. So much so that he that he gets pink again, 
Only now we're seeing another extension of the pink of the pink phase. As it turns out, it's causing his body to swell up and grow, and he and he and it grows just as he's holding the door to the freezer, causing it to rip off. As which Steven kind of starts freaking out at this, and so he's a, he has no idea what he's doing as his body keeps shifting and changing, and he doesn't know what's. And basically, it gets to the point where he realizes he needs help, and so he finally decides to break down and call Connie. Well. Almost. He almost calls Connie. And he tries to say, no, I don't want to bother her. But she ends up doing the she ends up doing all the work and she calls him. As such, she as such, she wants to check in on him, see how he's doing, because she still does care about him. And again, it's still a video call. So she sees Steven starting to swell up and she's like, okay, is this new? And Steven's like, it, it's been happening all morning, but it's fine. It's nothing to worry about. But clearly it is something to worry about because he keeps swelling and changing. And despite Steven saying it's not, it doesn't hurt, it's happening so frequently and all over his, all over the place that Connie thinks that this might need to be looked into. So she thinks that Steven needs to see a doctor. And thankful, and hey... Connie's mom's a doctor, so maybe he can see her, and so Steven reluctantly decides to go with her. And thankfully, Dr. Mahesh Warren does have an opening as one of her as one of her patients what did a last minute cancellation, so hey, his spot his spot is open, so she can see Steven. As such as such, Connie does try and be supportive to Steven as best as she can, but as she leaves Steven to her mom in the operating room, she decides to start call she decides to call someone in the meantime Stephen and dr mahesh warren go are just in the meantime dr mahesh warren starts performing tests on Stephen since you know while he maybe have jam his body is human enough so they can at least check some things and yeah she can tell that his physical state's not the best like he's hot like he of course there's the paint coloration he's apparently got a little fever and when she tries taking his blood pressure well well, the pink thing actually causes the blood pressure, causes the thing you put on your arm to explode. So yeah, his blood pressure is very high. As such, as such, Dr. Mahesh Warren wants to try, is trying to get to the root of all this and even ask Stephen, hey, who's your general pr practitioner? But Stephen has no idea what that term means. Because yeah, he's never been to the hospital, which Dr. Mahesh Warren's a little upset by. But she does try to still keep things calm as when she ends up freaking out over that, Stephen almost gets, almost balloons out. She says, it's okay, it's okay. I'll just have a chat with your dad later. In the meantime, though, she thinks that they still need to perform some tests, so she gives Steven a hospital gown and says they gotta do some physical stuff. As such, we get a little montage as, Steve, as Dr. Mahesh Warren continues testing Steven, looking into his looking into his body, how things work, even takes some x-rays, and, well, the results are a little... The results are, uh telling to say the least as she does end up as she does compare steven's x-ray to the gems which little funny thing all the gems x-rays are of course just of their gems since as we've established their bodies are hard light holograms except amethysts her holog her x-ray is literally her gem and whatever was in her stomach which is apparently a sandwich a donut a can of i don't know what and a baseball I don't know where the last two came from and i don't want to know the answer to that question so ultimate but so but either way steven's x-ray is most is essentially a human skeleton, albeit with his gem right there at the belly button. But what's most concerning about his X-ray are that his bones have clear fracture lines in them. And the thing is, with how their with how the fracture lines look, it's almost like that the, it's almost like that Stephen's body healed the instant these injuries happened. In other words, Steven's been through some serious trauma, but most likely, and most likely because of his gem physiology, his body was able to repair the trauma just as quickly as it happened. So basically, Steven's been through some shit, and his and it shows clearly on his body. Which, of course, Dr. Mahesh Warren's able to kind of brush that aside, because yeah, physically that means that Steven's fine, but... The thing is, if Steven went through some went through shit that was so serious that it actually caused genuine fractures in his sp uh, in his skull, in his body, and all other places, then how did it affect his mind? As such, she begins asking Steven if he'd been through if he, has he if he had been through tra any traumatic experiences as a kid, and well, <laughs> let's go back to Steven Universe, the original show, because yes. Steven has gone 
through some shit. Just to list some examples that even Steven lists himself, he was nearly killed by Centipedal. There was a Amethyst was nearly nearly was killed when her gem was cracked. Pearl got stabbed by through the chest by one of her holograms and was poofed right in front of Steven's eyes. And even listing stuff that Steven hasn't mentioned, there oh no, actually going back to stuff Steven's mentioned, there was a time when Steven almost was aged to death when he was free when he was freaking out about his mortality. And now going back to the other stuff, there was a time when Steven saw himself literally die in front of his eyes when himself in the future came back in time and smashed a time artifact. There was the time that he was that he was that he got his ass beaten by Jasper and he got a black eye and he learned that his the gems were intergalactic criminals. And then there's still more shit that goes on top of that. Seeing all these abject horrors and things that would make any kid piss their pants. And Steven had to deal with it every day. He had to keep dealing with this shit at a very young age. And it just kept happening. Steven kept dealing with that. And the threats didn't just stop. They escalated. They, of course, he still had to deal with some regular shit every now and then. But the problems continued escalating. Add on the fact that he began learning more and more dark secrets about his mom's past and the role she played in all this. He even had to deal with some of the skeletons that were still left over in her closet. And let's just say Steven's dealt with some shit. And he's dealt with a lot. And the thing is, and I know some people will disagree with me on this, we have seen this manifest in Steven Universe before. We have seen Steven almost crack. We have seen Steven see these problems and try to bury them. Remember when Steven and Connie were training as Stevani and then they and they started hallucin and Stevani started hallucinating. First it was Connie's issues, then Steven's. When Steven's issues came to the forefront, it caused Steven and Connie to unfuse, and Steven looked like he was about to have a breakdown until Connie was able to assure him that things were fine. And then there was a time when Steven confronted Rose in Rose's room and yelled at her over all the shit she pulled, and the emotional turmoil was so great that it caused a literal storm in the room. The thing is... Steve, these problems have always been there. Maybe they haven't always been as prevalent as they were now, but they've always been there. And that's part of the reason why Steven is having his freakouts now, because he's been in so much life-threatening shit that his brain is not and is, does not know how to register small problems. He, re, he he has encountered so many big things that have been trying to kill him. So many big problems. So many big threats. And now when he's encountering small problems, the little things that would just kind of annoy someone, his mind registers it as a genuine threat. And it's causing him to freak out, which is where the pink coloration comes in. With Dr. Mahesh Warren equating it to like the gem equivalent of cortisol. Basically, Steven's emotional outbursts are coming from stress, emotional turmoil, because Steven has dealt with so much crap in his years as the, in his years that hit not, not, at now he has no idea how to register small problems without feeling like his life is in danger and of course Steven asked the obvious question how come this is only getting the, this bad now especially with the swelling and Dr. Maheshwar mentions that it could be partially because Steven feels like he's losing his support system which guess what we have seen that in Steven Universe Future too. Steven's friends going off and doing their own thing Steven not wanting to trouble the crystal gems well because they're not only dealing with their own shit but he's but because since he dealt has a good chunk of his life in the original series was trying to help them deal trying to air out their dirty laundry he doesn't want to trouble them and now here we are where steven is trying to kind of rely on connie and connie is not being the person he wants her to be which yeah once Dr. Maheshwaran mentions that maybe a particularly traumatic experience occurred to trigger all this, Steven thinks back to the botched proposal, and the swelling gets worse. As he grows big, so big that he actually starts out, 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 outgrowing the room, which Connie runs in and sees all this, and immediately she gets the clip, she gives the, she and immediately Steven gives her the clip, no, clip notes version about how all this is from all this, all of his traumas, everything that happened before, and how the reason he's growing 
is because of what happened last night, which I love the instant that it clicks for Connie. She realizes that that's what's causing his emotional distress, and her first response is that she and her mom probably need to leave the room because they're the ones that are putting Steven in this kind of position, which even Steven tries saying, no, it's okay, come on. It's, yeah, I understand. Look, it's not your fault, but I need to be alone right now, but Dr. Mahesh Warren wants details because she wants to know, wait, something happened? What happened? What happened with you two? But, Steve, of course, Connie's trying to tell her mom, no, he needs us to be away right now, and Steven is just getting so emotionally pent up that he finally just says Connie I need Connie I can't be around you right now and he yells so much that get the room shakes and the walls crack which yeah it's a little uneasy thankfully the tension is broken by the arrival of one Greg universe yeah, it turns out the person that Connie called earlier was Steven's dad. She was worried about Steven, and she felt that he needed his dad right now. And once Steve, his dad learned that something was up with Steven, he just came straight home. And basically, basically with with Greg there, Connie and Dr. Mahesh weren't try leaving. But the instant that Steven hears that Connie was the one that called his dad, he just tells her thank you. And what I love is that while Connie realizes that Steven is not in a place where he should be around her, she still shows that she cares. As she looks back at him and says, It's okay. It's okay. I Okay, I'm, I'm probably forgetting what she said. But put simply, she just smiles at Steven and essentially lets him know she'll be there for him when he needs her. And so she and Dr. Mahesh Warden leave. It's almost heartbreaking. But yeah, Greg is finally here and Steven finally opens up to him about the failed proposal and how... He really has no idea how to deal with all this. He's dealt with some. He like he's just doesn't know how to register any of this. And basically, his dad just tells him it's okay. I'm here. It's okay. We can just talk this out. And so that manages to calm Stephen down enough that he's able to return to normal size and stop glowing pink. As such, the episode ends as Greg as Stephen's back at his home. It's the evening now, and Greg is just being there for him. He made Stephen hot cocoa. He's talking with him, helping him out, basically just trying to tell Stephen it's okay to do, it's okay. We it's okay. We don't have to deal with this all at once. We can work through this. We can adapt. Basically, he's just doing everything in his power to let Stephen know he's there for him if he needs him, and he will do whatever it takes to help Stephen out. And it's really sweet. And even with the last shot of the episode being the little hot cocoa that he made for Steven, it's, it's just some a moment of calm in the storm. So, All right, so my thoughts on these episodes. Oh boy. First, let's talk about, first let's talk about Together Forever. This is an episode that the instant, that when I first saw it, I just knew this can only end badly. Like, the instant that the idea was thrown out that Steven was gonna propose to Connie, my first thought was, oh, this can only go wrong. And yes, it did just go, it did go wrong. Which, I feel like that one of the things that kind of makes it hurt more is the fact that Steven really did pull all the stops. Like, he didn't just, like, do a half hour proposal and then just decide yeah that's good enough she'll go with this no he really went the extra mile to make the proposal feel very romantic he set it up at where he and connie first met he set out a nice little spread covered in, in yellow roses he has little he has like he made a, a cute little cake he had got a cute little cake commission from lars's bakery shop he got a he has like he has bre he has bread and jam because steven and connie are jam buds again he, and he even made a little song for her, and it's a good song, it's a cute song, but maybe some darker undertones when you stop and think about it, by which I mean Steven's darker side, but we'll get to that when we get to that. My point is, Steven really did feel like he was trying to make the mood feel sweet and tender, and you could tell it was working. Connie loved it all, and she was just, like... You could just tell that it was just making her heart swell. Like, she was just looking at Steven, and re and you could just tell that she knew that Steven was the one. She wants to spend, like, like, like she said, she and Steve, like she and Steven said, they know they want to spend the rest of her lives together. And if anything, this just affirms to Connie that she does want to spend the rest of her life with this guy. Because look at all the effort he put in. Look at all the time he spent. He clearly pays attention, and considering all the shit that they went through as kids, and how he stood by her every step of the way, helped her out and she helps him out they are great together it's sweet and i love it which made the ultimate proposal hurt more because we know that this isn't gonna work out let's pretend that steven and connie are not let's like let's pretend that steven and connie don't have their whole lives ahead of them yet and they're not immediately dealing with some emotional stress right now and haven't been through various traumatic experiences 
Steven's 16 and Connie's 14. They're too young. Like, that, t that factor alone immediately makes me realize... Yeah, this isn't gonna work. And even Connie points that out when she said when she when she just when she turns down the proposal because they because they're too young. And on top of that, because on top of that, there are still a lot of things that Connie wants to do on her own. She doesn't want to have to feel like that she has to be Stevani all the time. Of course, she does want Steven in her life, and she does want to be there for him when he needs her. But she has her own life to live. There are things she wants to do. She's looking to try and go to college, for God's sake. And yes, she will always want to be there for Steven. But she's not Steven's... But, she, that doesn't, but she, she's not Steven's missing piece. In Garnet's own words, the missing piece should be... As Garnet says in the episode, which I didn't talk about, your missing piece shouldn't be your missing half. Your other, your other half shouldn't be your missing piece. It should be something. That, it should be something that complements you. Shouldn't that complements who you are? And well, at the end of the day, while while Connie is always going to be there for Steven, is always going to be his emotional support. She's not his missing piece. She's that's Steven's job. Which this is what I was talking about last week. When, remember how I said at the end of last week's vlog how Steven and Connie's rela positive relationship was going to become a double-edged sword this time around? Well, this is what I meant. Last week's episode, we saw Steven fumbling and having self-doubts when he wanted to skate with Connie and her friends. But ultimately, Connie saw that Steven was faltering and went to go help him. And as a result, that little extra boost was able to give Steven enough confidence that he could skate. And as a result, Connie helped him out. They became Stevani, and Stevani whooped everyone's asses at the skating rink. But in this case, Steven is, in this case, Steven's kind of getting to a point where he's over relying on that relationship. He wants that to be his quick fix solution when the problem is, well, he can't rely on Connie like that. That doesn't mean that Connie is never going to want to help him. No, 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 no. If anything, last week's episode does affirm that having someone in your life when, can help you deal with this emotional shit, can help you can help you face this, these problems head on. And I agree, and the thing is, that's true. And I've seen it in real life. I've seen it with friends. I've seen it with family. When you have that other half in your life, it, can, the, it, doesn't, make, it doesn't stop the problems from hitting hard, but it can make dealing with them a lot easier. The problem here is that Steven wants, that Steven's means of trying to fix, deal with all those issues that are coming up in his life, especially with him having his emotional breakdowns and him turning pink, is to have Connie, be, is, is to be Stevani. To be, as he, as, like he said, when he's Stevani, he feels confident, he feels sure of himself. But as, but as himself, he just feels lacking. And therein lies the problem. Steven is over relying on his relationship to Connie. Connie, oh, and the thing, like I said, Con his relationship with Connie can make dealing with stuff easier, but it has to be Steve, but Steven has to be the one to confront it, which is why I think he had that emo, that why he had his reaction when Garnet told him that his other half. That that that's, that ultimately whatever's going on in his life, Connie can, got, Connie or Stevani cannot be what fills that hole because that was what he was hoping it would be. That Stevani would be that quick fix solution to help fix all these issues, make him feel confident about himself. But that's not the problem. But that's not it. Stevani and Connie, but and Connie are definitely are definitely key components for Steven dealing with these problems. But Steven himself has to confront them, which Steven does not want to do. Or at the very least, if he wants to confront them, he doesn't deal. He doesn't know how to confront them. And as a result, Steven starts getting worse. That's actually something which kind of going off of this. This actually relates in a way to Garnet's character development. Here's the thing. Garnet, well, here's the thing. While Ruby and Sapphire were the ones that pushed Steven into proposing to Connie, the problem is they went about it the wrong way, and they used their own relationship as a baseline. But the thing is, ironically, Steven's problems are kind of the same thing that Garnet was dealing with in the original series. Case in in the original series, Garnet had an issue of control. She all because she was supposed to be the answer, because she was supposed to be the leader of the Crystal Gems. She always felt like she had to be in control, that she had to know all the pro all of, all the solutions to every problem. And for the most part, she could do that. She could be that guiding hand. She could see the solution that everyone was missing, and she did it well. 
But there were times when she couldn't. There were times when she dealt with problems that she couldn't deal with, that she couldn't deal with either physically or emotionally, and it was getting to her. And as a result, she started freaking out a little because she had no idea what to do. And she did fall apart over these things, both both emotionally and physically. She she's dealt with issues like this before, but she's always but she's always believed that the only way that she can deal with them is by being herself, by with Ruby and Sapphire relying on one another, having to always be together, and when they confront a problem that doesn't fit into that little niche that they can deal with, then suddenly they start having issues, because they're supposed to be the answer to everything, they're supposed to complete one another, but they weren't, that was the problem, and it isn't until they finally split up when they, re when they learn the truth about Rose Quartz and Pink Diamond that they finally get that clarity, because it's in that moment when Ruby and Sapphire are able to realize that they don't need to have the other person in their life to feel whole, but they still want them in their life. Ruby and Sapphire, when they were separated, were able to gain their own bits of emotional clarity. Sapphire was able to come to terms with the fact that she genuinely did care for Ruby and was concerned for her well-being, even without having Pink Diamond tell her, don't ever question this. In the case of Ruby, she was able to go off and explore and experience life for the first time without having to worry about having someone else be happy or something. And yet throughout all that, she was like, I still want to be with Sapphire. That's the thing. That was the moment of clarity for Garnet. It made her realize she didn't always have to have the answer. She didn't always have to keep it together because sometimes it's okay to let go. It's sometimes okay to be clueless. It's sometimes okay to kind of unwind. And that's what that, and that's why her relationship now is so much more healthier than it was before. And I'm not saying that Ruby and Sapphire didn't love each other before. No, they did love each other. They were concerned with one another. It's just that now they can actually enjoy the relationship without feeling like they always have to be together. They can be guarded all the time. They can be guarded most of the time, but there's times and they can let go, unwind, and do their own things because they know that the other person is there waiting for them. It's, again, nice, but they can still deal with individual stuff on their own. And it's because they were able to have, they were able to get that emotional clarity that they could finally do that. But the problem with Steven here is that he's stuck in the former mindset. He thinks, like, he's finally at this relationship point, and in his mind, in, he's not, he's essentially not learned from Garnet's example. He's see, like, he's been there for Garnet and Ruby, but the thing is, he was always the emotional support there. In this regard, however, he's having issues of his own. He doesn't know how to deal with them, and his quick, quick solution... Just be Stevani. Have Stevani be the one that deals with all these problems. And because Stevani is one half me, one half Connie, then Stevani will be able to deal with all that shit lickety split because Stevani is going to be more confident. Stevani will have it more put together. I wouldn't have that problem, but Connie can complete me. But the thing is, Steven can't have that and the fact and the thing is he cannot comprehend it he wants to fix this salute he wants to fix whatever's wrong with him as quickly as possible without actually having to confront it himself and as a result of that when connie tells him no or at the very least tells him not yet steven sees that as an outright rejection now like i said connie tries as delicately as possible to break this news to Steven. He even tells him, it's okay. It's okay. I, I still want to spend the rest of my life with you. It's just, I'd like to have some time to myself. I'd like to do things on my own. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying not yet. And she tries to still care about Steven's emotions. And when she sees that clearly Steven's a little broken up about it, she tries to comfort him. Even when she gets, even when her alarm goes off, she tries to ignore it because no, this is more important. And she only goes back to her studying because Steven urges her on and says, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. And well, this is the breakdown because at this point, because Steve, Steven doesn't hear Connie's comfort. She doesn't hear her. She, he doesn't hear her saying, I was, I do want to be with you. He heard the, I, he heard the not yet. And that, and that became a no in his mind. In his eyes, Connie doesn't want what he wants. Connie does not want the relationship like he wants, which means that Connie doesn't want to be with him the way he wants to be with her. And that causes an emotional rift between them, one that Stephen is the source of. And, that's what res and as a result, Stephen begins isolating. And that leads in, and well... Despite Garnet's best efforts at the end of the episode, 
Steven is still doesn't does, still doesn't want to confront his problems. Basically, at the heart of the episode, it's Steven begin it's Steven beginning to slip a little bit more downhill because Connie was a major support structure in his mental health. And now in his mind, he re, he doesn't he doesn't see her like that anymore. He doesn't see her as something that can help him stand up. He sees her as someone that's pushing him aside, which she doesn't. She does want to be there for Steven. Even after all this, she keeps checking in on him, keeps doing all these things to try and help him out. And when she does understand the root of his problems, she tries giving him space. But in Steven's mind, she's not that kind of, she is not a support system anymore. She is part of the problem. And it only gets worse. And in that regard, Together Forever really does a great job at showcasing that. Like I said, that that, that the, the, the the metaphorical sort of Democles really just is hanging above Stephen's head throughout the throughout the second half of the episode. Once marriage is brought up, you know things are going to go wrong. You know it's on a blow up in Stephen's face, but you see all the effort he puts into it, and you just know it's just going to go badly. And when it goes badly, it's going to have a very negative impact on Stephen. And oh boy does it. I will say, there is some genuinely nice stuff in the episode. Like, for example, I like that we're seeing more of Ruby and Sapphire in the future. Seeing that, yeah, the lessons they learned at the end of Steven Universe have stuck with them, and they're doing their own things. I like seeing Ruby being a being a head of a scout troop, which I love that she has a badge for literally every occasion, like a badge for drawing everything. Hell, she even has a marriage proposal badge, which I don't know why she has that, but whatever. You prepare for everything, I guess. And I do and I do kind of like that we see Sapphire as she has her own class. Again, I like that. Plus, we actually get to see their new designs after they got poofed at the end of Steven Universe. And uh, Ruby's is pretty cool. Mostly the same with some gold accents and some parts of her outfit. And Sapphire's is... It's like formal, but also informal at the same time. I don't really know how to describe it. It's a dress, but it's kind of open. But it kind of opens at the chest and then go, tries at a sash for opening up for the gown. I, I like, it's basically its own thing. But there's, there's obviously an undershirt under there too. But my point is this. It's like, it's formal while also informal. I dig it. It's cool. But at the end of the day, what this episode excels at is just really kind of, is really just kind of hammering in how bad things are going for Steven. And that ultimately there is no quick fix solution. Steven has to confront these issues and well... He doesn't want to. And we see those issues continuing to go downhill when we get to growing pains. Grow and this is the episode that finally puts everything in perspective. That at the end of the day, every single thing that Steven has dealt with over the course of his life has been leading him to this breakdown. Now, some people have complained that this breakdown feels too out of left field, that Steven didn't show any signs of this before. He seemed to be doing fine. And to that I say, yes, that's true for the most part. Like I said, if you go back and watch Steven Universe, if you pay attention to Steven's character, you will notice that he slips up at points. There are times when he clearly is in emotional distress and is afraid. It feels like he's ostracized or he starts breaking down and crying because there is a lot of shit that happens in his life that he has to deal with. Now, some stuff he does come to terms with. Like, he does eventually learn to step out of his mom's shadow as he does learn who she was and reaffirms that he is him. There is stuff, he does gain emotional clarity in that regard. And that actually is a nice big bit of character development because it does help reaffirm who Steven is as a person. But the problem is that there is still a lot of serious shit that Steven does dealt with over the course of his life that he has never fully addressed. He never has come to terms with the fact, like, yeah, him learning his mom was pink diamond helped knock her off that pedestal he put her on. But that's still a lot of serious shit that he has to deal with. He has to kind of confront all that. And the thing is, there's still more serious shit that he's kind of had to deal with. He's had to deal with mortality. He's had to deal with, like you said, he's had to deal with nearly dying. This kid, these, he's, see, he's, he's kind of has to deal with guilt over not being able to save certain people, over having to watch some people fall into corruption and then swat his hand away, or in his, in the case of the season finale, once again nearly dying when he confronts his aunt or grandmother i don't know white i don't know what white diamond is to him but she literally rips his gem out of him and that almost killed him the only reason it didn't is because steven and his pink have managed to fuse back together which is again a still really good scene and i'm still kicking myself for not having talked about that when i talked about change your mind but it's that only worked because they got together just in time but the scars still 
remain. And I find, and honestly, I think this is really interesting. Of course a kid wouldn't register all of this when it was happening. Because in a because when you have a kid superhero, they're not going to be dealing with that shit. They're going to be doing superhero stuff. Like, let's go with Ben 10. Let's talk about Ben 10 to that in that regard. But it comes down to Ben 10. Ben as a kid is not going to be concerned with the emotional damage that comes from having to fight supervillains during the summer vacation. He's just going to think about what's the best alien for the job? Slam down and go and fight the bad guy. Because because that's what Ben does. Ben is a good kid who does those things. But I would also argue that Ben 10 kind of also shows some of that negative ramifications. And ironically, this is also shown in the reboot. Let's talk about those two. Let's talk about their versions of Ben 10,000. In the original series, when we met Ben 10,000 in the beginning, he was emotionally jaded, cut off from his family, keeping everyone at a distance. And while he still did the hero thing, he was more serious about it, more grounded, more angry, just kind of putting up a wall to the point point where he was almost always working and almost never returned to his human form when we saw him, just constantly switching from one alien to the other until his younger self gave him that emotional clarity and realized maybe it's okay to be a little silly every once in a while and recapture that youth. That youth. And then likewise, while I haven't seen the Ben 10,010 special in the reboot, from what I've seen in the gl from, cl from clips, the Ben 10,000 that we saw in that special was not doing good for himself. Apparently he was out of shape, he had disappeared for years, nobody had heard from him and he only came out of hiding because Earth was being invaded by a by a race of aliens who by a race of aliens and so he decided we and so he decided he had to come out of hiding to try and defend the earth to try and defend the earth and like with the original series interacting with his younger self in that special did help bring some life back to him because before that it was almost like he had never grown up it was like he was still that same act uh, that still that same kid just smacking the omnitrix ready to find the next alien to do the job for him but Again, there. But again, both versions of Ben Ten Thousand have one thing in common. They're clearly dealing with some shit. Ben Ten Thousand in the original series was emotionally closed off. Ben Ten Thousand in the reboot had not emotionally matured, and that I think is interesting. Now, by the end of both, both now in the in the end of both their first appearances, both versions of Ben Ten Thousand did gain emotional clarity and did come to healthier places because the younger selves did give did allow them to see that spark that they were missing. But Steven doesn't have that! Steven does not get to look at his younger self, and he doesn't- and the thing is, Steven does not have a Steven to help him through all this. And even if he did, let's be honest, he would just shoo him away. Because Steven it kept pushing people away. He didn't tell. He didn't want to tell the gems about his issues because the because he because he is because he's helped the gems with their dirty laundry and he thinks that this will add more fuel to that fire. He doesn't want to talk. He can't talk to his friends because his friends are off doing their own thing and he misses them. Yes, but he feels like that they don't need him anymore. And it's not helped by the fact that Prickly Pear probably helped made Stephen believe that he can't air out his dirty laundry without making things to get more ugly. But then you get to. But then. But then you get to Connie. Connie was his last support system. Now, of course, you can make the argument that Peridot was. Like, Peridot can help out, too. But Connie was the biggest support system. And we saw that... And we saw that in the... I'm trying to remember the episode name. I'm trying to remember the episode name. It was... Bismuth Casual, yes. In the, we saw that in the Bismuth Casual episode. Steven was having a problem. Connie came in and helped him, and Steven began to put his more faith in her. He began to see her as this pillar to help him rise up. But oh me oh my, that but oh me oh my, that pillar was too hard to climb. Steven began relying on Connie more, and so when he made this bid to propose to her so that they be Stevani all the time, it blew when it didn't work out, it affected him very negatively. And we see the ramifications of that in growing pains, as Steven feels like he's uh, he's alone, that he has no one to rely on, and being reminded of that go uh, blunder, that Connie is not in the same place emotionally that he is, or what he thinks is the same emotional place, it, br it causes him to lash out. It causes him to freak out. It causes him to be in distress because he has no idea how to deal with this stress. And I, believe it or not, I kind of get the cortisol thing. I have my own little freak outs day to day. Little problems for me cause me to just blow up. And I, I'm thankful that the people in my life are able to deal with it because trust me, if I had someone like me in my life, I don't think I'd be able to deal with that shit. But 
Stephen is but we see that Stephen is having the, the, that this little that this problem magnified is making him feel like he's alone not helped by the fact that his that the crystal gems are nowhere nearby when he does want to turn to them for help and his dad is not anywhere is not anywhere close which makes the ending to growing pains that much stronger because his dad does finally come in and offer Stephen that support that he felt he was missing from Connie and again it it hurts so much because what I love about this is that despite Steven feeling like Connie is not the same is not that same support that she was, she is still the same support. She sees that Steven is unwell. He's not emo that, emo that physically he's going wrong and that emotionally he's in turmoil. And what does she do? She tries helping him. She pushes. And the thing is, while Steven keeps trying to push people out because he's because he does because he has no idea how to deal with this and he doesn't want to get them involved, everybody does clearly want to be there for him. We saw that with Garnet and Together Forever as she was on standby after Steven at when Steven crawled out of that crater in the beach because she knew that he would need someone to talk to and then likewise here's connie who is doing everything in her power to help steven out and then when she finally clicks to her that part of the reason why steven is be is be swelling out and having these break these emotional freakouts is because of the botched proposal and she quickly realizes i need to step back because my presence is making him feel worse that's what i think is just it, it hurts and because it, it's so sweet because she's because that's the that's what I like. She's trying to put Steven's needs first here because she realizes that, yes, this may be awkward, but she's seeing the direct results of this on him. It's hurting him, both physically and mentally, and it's just getting worse, and she's doing everything in her power to help this poor kid because he doesn't know how to deal with this. And... It's, it tears you up, especially when you start learning the context behind Steven's emotional outburst. The pink powers are maybe, or maybe the direct result of that stress finally starting to come out, but that stress had been building up for a while. It's just the pink powers are him starting to hit his breaking point. We saw that with Jasper when the powers first came out, because in that regard, Jasper was just calling him weak and useless, and he finally just had it up to here with her shit, and he turned pink and said, I'm not weak, I'm not good. I'm not weak, I'm not useless, and he started kicking her ass. When he when Aunt, when Smoky Quartz was trying to save those people from a from a from a roller from a roller coaster that was about to crash, she was freaking out, and that was and that that resulted in the emotional issues coming out. When Steven started learning about all the more even more terrible shit that his mom had done, it caused him to start emotionally lashing out. When his dad was in danger, well, that one actually I think was more appropriate, but still, basically. Steven, these are Steven, these are not Steven showcasing a new power, they're Steven hitting his breaking point. I mean, yeah, it is a new power, and if controlled and utilized properly, it can be used, for, it can be used just as easily as any other power, but the problem is, the circumstances surrounding this power involves emotional distress, and the mo and the thing is, the emotional distress that Steven is feeling right now is very much, and uh, is very much a bear, is the deep-seated kind, the one that's rooted in his mind, and it all came from all of those terrible experiences, and it hurts. I and it's it makes you just feel so sorry for this kid because you're just seeing him slowly losing it, slowly breaking down as these things that he looked to for support are starting to fall away. Connie was one of his biggest support systems, and now he's starting to push her away too because of what happened to the proposal, which is irrational, yes, but in Steven's mind, that's how he's registering it. Connie rec and Connie recognizes this and realizes that if she needs to, that if she wants Steven to get calm again, that she. She needs to keep her distance at least for a little while. She does want to be there for Steven, but if her presence is making it worse, then she needs to step back and let him process this on his own time with someone else in his support system in the form of his dad. I like that, and I love how they're addressing that. And again, going back to what I was talking about, about how stuff from Steven's early years is now affecting him negatively, I actually love that that's a plot point. It's a very different angle that you can never see with a child superhero because... Think of it like this. It's like sending a it's like sending a boy to war. They do, they see so much horrible shit and are expected to just deal with it, fight it out and keep going. But what happens when the fighting is over? How do you deal with that? You were in a proper headspace for that, but you can't just like swap, you can't just like turn that off. Your mind is going to be stuck there for a while. And we see that with Steven here. He spent a good chunk of his younger years fighting monsters, fighting other gems, fighting for his life just to protect the planet. But now the world is safe. The galaxy is safe. 
and yet Steven still can't get out of battle mode. And the fact that he has to be calm and, de and the fact that he's dealing with problems that are still in his life that are small and minimal and dealing with them in a very and dealing with them as if they're big threats, it shows that all of those issues that Steven has dealt with have come crashing down. And once again, addressing criticism about how, well, how did Steven ever deal with this before? Like Dr. Mahesh Warren said, Steven had support. Steven had things to distract him, things to help keep his mind off those things. And you want to know those things were? It was, it was helping people and turning to his friends, which admittedly both of those go hand in hand with each other. But that's how Stephen coped. For you, but that's how Stephen coped. That's how Stephen registered all of these issues. When Stephen learned that his mom was Pink Diamond for two years, he never had a chance to register it because he was always solving anyone else's problems. He was helping Ruby and Sapphire with their problems. He was helping Amethyst. He was he he had he was planning the wedding. He was talking to Bismuth. He went to the homeworld. He spent two years deconstructing the Gem Empire. He started running a little homeschool, and now that that's done, he's finally in a position where he can talk, where he has to deal with this shit, and people are still moving on without him, and they don't rec and they don't recognize that he's having these issues until he starts having them right in front of their face at which point okay now they want to look at this which again it makes it sound it makes them sound more selfish than they're actually than they actually are but you don't understand what i'm getting at my point and that's and the thing is as steven is just grasping looking for something to support now there's connie who in the past has always been a major support system when he's had breakdowns but now she's going away too and when he tries to hold on to her and keep her and keep her on place or be where she is so that they can always be together she says no i, I don't want that like that right now and it starts making him worse because he's feeling like he's losing more support. It's making him feel even worse. And as a result, that has a mad first effect on his mental state as he begins pushing more people away. This is, again, we are seeing Steven in the midst of an emotional breakdown and him just grasping at anything to help him. And in many regards, he has no, they have no idea what to do. It's, tra it's sad, it's tragic, but it's done so well and done so Honestly, realistically, and I'm not talking about in the case of like the powers or anything like that. I don't know many people who suddenly go big, go turn pink and grow big when they're dealing with emotional stress. But the way that Steven is reacting to the stress, how Steven is trying to cope with it, him having his freakouts, him just trying to brush it off as if it's no big deal, pushing people away who are just trying to extend a hand of friend, who are just trying to extend a hand of concern. That's very realistic. The breakdown feels like it's a very real breakdown. I recognize these signs because in some cases I've seen them in myself. I've seen, I've done, there have been times that I've tried brushing aside my issues and just tried to pretend they're not there. I've even seen it with other people. There was a guy I knew once on a server who, for the sake of anonymity, I'm not going to tell you anything about him, who constantly kept brushing off his issues and it, it was not healthy. It just kept making things worse. And as a result... We see Steven as he's just constantly getting a little bit worse at a time, losing support systems. And while he does still have others that he can turn to, and they can still ease the pain, well, things just are going to get worse. And the episode showcases just how much emotional turmoil this kid is in. It ends on a kind of good note, with his dad coming back to him and letting him know he'll always be there for him. But, uh, but the thing is, these issues are still there. And while Steven's dad can help Steven throughout it, as we've established, in the, as we've established with Together Forever, if Steven wants to fix these issues, he has to confront them head on. And unfortunately, he does not want to do that just yet. So, on the whole, Growing Pains is a really effed up episode, but in the best way possible. So, yeah, on the whole, Together Forever... Really, an good and entertaining episode that really kind of shows the emotional trauma that Steven's going through while sh and showcasing him just having and showcasing the beginnings of a major breakdown. And Growing Pains puts a lot of things in perspective and really highlights just how messed up this kid is and how he desperately needs help. And it does it so well. It's a great plot point that I love seeing and I love seeing how they approach it. But on the whole, and quite frankly, yeah, things are, and quite frankly, yeah. Despite the despite the honestly happy ending, we just know that things are going to get a lot worse before they get a lot better. So, yeah, that's really all I have to say. I thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson, and I hope to see you next week as Steven starts to hit his literal breaking point. So till then, hope you have a good night, and take care.